Welcome back to the Chasm Channel. Okay, so this is a follow-up tutorial to get a camera connected to your WinCC OA video server. So let's go ahead and look at the user interface for the video module inside of WinCC OA. If this is the first time that you're, you're viewing this video tutorial, feel free to view our setting up a surveillance video camera tutorial first because it will get you to this stage that you actually have this video icon inside of your system management tool. It'll catch you up to this point. So let's take a look at the video server. So it gives us a few options here. Video Explorer is where we can go in and set up cameras. A camera list is basically the list of all the cameras configured in your system that you can take a look at the system, the number of cameras, any presets that you have with um, regarding to pan, tilt, zoom, so on. We also have sequences that are available for camera settings. External events, so this could be alarms that are triggered by certain inputs and outputs of the camera. We also have a video export, so if there are certain saved alerts that you would like to export or save for later viewing, that is also possible. And then we have the workstation that is all camera-based video management, so you can actually look at your displays, your cameras, both live and playback of a particular camera. So I've already got a camera configured into this system, but I'm going to show you how to get to this point. Okay. And then there's an examples panel with a few different components that are on here. So EWO is extended widget object, but there's a bunch of objects that we can use throughout the system so that you can drag and drop and use inside of your SCADA platform. Okay. So let's focus on getting a camera set up. So if we click into the Video Object Explorer, the first thing that we want to do is click on this System Components tab. And we want to see green all the way here. So the first step we need to do is make sure that your video, let me pull this up, your video managers are set up and running. So once again, go view the previous tutorial, but right here, the video manager, if I turn this off, it turns off this API video manager right here. Okay, so that's what this does. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. And then these are the video scripts. If I turn this off, you're gonna see this, this green box turn off. Okay, all the sequences, all of the connectors to there, all right? Now, in order to configure your video server, what we wanna do is click this box right here, or you can get there by right-clicking on system, common settings, system configuration. You checkbox this and add the host name of the video server that you're using. Notice that I'm not checkboxing any of this. We're just a super simple setup to get a video camera set up into WinCCOA. Also note that I'm working with the latest release. So this is WinCCOA version 316. And these versions right here, because WinCCOA is, is IEC 62443, uh, working on security levels one and two um, from a cybersecurity standpoint. They are looking at encrypted communications with everything. So they utilize a third party software product called VIMAC or VMAC. And so because they're using this, they require their third parties to also have um, encrypted IPC sockets. Okay. So there's another step that you need to do with registering PEM keys. For that, if you can't get your video server up and running, and what that looks like is you go into video project, um, it, which is the name of this project that I'm working on, and then you go into data, video OA, and it's this PEM key that I registered, and that allows the VIMAC video server to communicate with WinCCOA, all right? So once this is all up and running and you've got green all the way here, um, you can click import VMAC keys too. It'll do the same thing. So there's a few different ways, look in the help files and so on. Now to get to this point with a camera right here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and we're gonna step through how we actually get a camera communicating inside of WinCCOA. So right now I have no cameras and we gotta start literally with the device that we wanna connect. So I am using an Axis M5014 network camera, and it's a pan, tilt, zoom. It's about a $400 camera. 
You can use a few different camera types, uh, but this is one that I liked because it was relatively small, uh, had a pretty nice resolution uh, to it. But the default IP address for this is 192.168.0.90. So whatever camera device you use, it's going to let you know what the default username and passwords are and whatnot. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to set this up to be on the same network as my WinCCOA server. So I've got just DHCP set up. I would advise doing a fixed IP um, if you're actually putting this into you know, a runtime control network. I just, I've got um, a router in place that already distributed um, an IP address to this device, so I just left it for ease of use. But the device um, IP address for this is 168, um, 192.168.2.108, all right? So that's what I need to note with this. The next thing I need to note is what kind of video stream that I'm using, okay? So I'm using, so I am using MJPEG as the file format. You've got H.264, WinCCOA also supports H.265. These are the compression uh, levels for um, videos. And mind you, I'm not a video expert, but I do know that there are different ways, um, different communication codecs for the cameras that are connected to your system, okay? I'm gonna click on this video and audio here. I'm running the MJPEG format and I know my IP address, all right? So those are the main things that I've got set up on this. Okay, so I've got that going. Now I'm gonna come over here and I right click on camera. I'm gonna create a new camera object, object, but before I do that, remember everything inside of OA goes back to the database manager, which is the PARA, all right? So when we added camera, it created all these camera objects and it created a master WinCCOE camera and I don't have any cameras built in here so just to show you the relation between um, creating a new camera object and how it automatically creates the data point let's go ahead and watch this so camera right click create new object we're gonna leave it camera one it's going to be an IP camera mind you you can add in like serial analog um, cameras as well but we're going to use an IP camera and that should have created a camera object here. So camera one is basically what we did. So through the graphical user interface, we're actually creating the data point inside of the PARA. All right. So I just wanted to show that to you. We'll get out of there. And so now we're in here with this camera. This is where I enter the information of the device that I just configured. And so let's also take a look at this. So I'm using an access camera but let's take a look at what else we can use. So there's some native drivers. You can use the Axis brand, Bosch, uh, Mobotix, OnVIF, which is Open Network Video Interface Forum. Um, this is an open standard. If you work with um, OPC UA or OPC, it's kind of like the open comm protocol for the camera world. Uh, Sony RTSP, this is another um, open, uh, it's like, uh, I'll have to look up the acronym. It's kind of losing in my mind right now, but RTSP, usually that's the route that I go if there's a camera and if it supports this, my answer is like, yes, but sometimes you run into problems trying to use pan, tilt, zoom. But if you have a native driver, you stay within one of these brands, then you can use the, the PTZ functionality and then USB test camera. So if you don't have a camera, you can actually just set this up and use the camera stream on your on your laptop okay so we've got an access camera um, i know it's communicating via http so i am going to add the ip address here 2.108 we're using port 80 and then i'm going to add the username and password that's something that you didn't see me configure but you need to add the username and password of the device that you are um, setting up in here, okay? And this gives you HTTP or HTTPS. So if you're using port 443 or port 80, it's gonna determine which route you go there. This camera has pan, tilt, zoom functionality, so I'm going to checkbox that. I wanna make it active. 
and then I want to make it a permanent connection. So this allows you to, if you're on the screen, it's going to keep it there, or I can say, hey, I want this camera always streaming to the system. Uh, it doesn't need to be a permanent connection uh, in this particular instance that I'm showing. All right, so I'm going to pick stream one, I'm going to make it active, and then back to the type of video format that I was using, I'm using the MJPEG, I'm using HTTP, and it's going through port 80 once again. And then we are looking at an MJPEG video. We're using a TCP tunnel, the username. I'm adding my username and password of the device once again, and I'm going to hit apply. And once I hit okay, it's gonna take me back to this test screen right here with the pertinent information. And if I configure this properly, I should see the camera, all right? So we're seeing that right here, and I'm going to step away from my desk. Maybe you can see me here. One second. So if you can hear me in the background, it's, it's pretty easy to do that way. And we can also pan, tilt, zoom, and control this camera. All out of the box stuff, even zoom in, depending on what the device allows you to do okay another cool feature so now that we've got a camera connected in here the next thing is let's say hi to James hey James can you give the camera a wave <laughs> all right cool um, so another cool feature here is that it gives you when CCOA video gives you a bunch of pre-built functionality that you can use um, from a drag and drop standpoint of getting the camera into like your SCADA screens or whatever. So now that that's configured, let's go ahead and close this out. Now let's create a new panel or window and let's use some of the stuff out of the video sub project. And so they've, you know, go ahead and play around with a bunch of the different panels that are available. But in here, we want to grab this camera live stream. And if you hover over it, you can see what it looks like, okay? So we're just going to drag and drop this over to the screen and it's going to ask me for which object. If I hit the dot 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 right here, click this button, it's going to bring up my database editor aka the para. I'm going to go down to WinCCOA video camera and select camera one or whatever camera device that you have in there. That is all that I need to do and in this particular um, component these are just reference panels you can open it and modify it for however you want to look if you don't want to offer control um, right here which i'll show you um, you cannot actually see in the screen but if i let me name this really fast so this is going to be office cam and we are going to save this Uh, you can see the, the controls right here. So if you don't want that on there, you open the reference panel and it won't be available for any of your users, okay? Or you can hide it, delete it, whatever. And WinCCOA is gonna maintain the original reference panel and just make a copy of this in, inside of your project folders, okay? So we've got that built, awesome. We've got officecam.xml, we'll close that out. Now let's get it into a runtime environment. So we'll open panel topology. Uh, let me delete this really quick and show you. So panel topology, I want to insert a child node. I'm going to call this office cam. And then right down here where it says include relative path, go to my examples folder, office cam, hit OK because that's where I saved the folder and that's that um, if this is your first time setting up panel topology most likely this screen is going to pop up i would select one of the responsive designs so that it'll automatically configure to the resolution of your desktop so i'm i've selected the first option here so that it gives me this and it should give you a you know preview of what that template is so i'm going to use this one hit ok yes save yes and we're going to close all right now the next thing we want to do is i'm just going to look at this through 
you know, web client, and we don't need that anymore. We'll close that as well. Um, I'm going to open our console back up. And we also have a, a video on this, but uh, we just want to get the web server going. So in my project, I'm going to drill down into the highest level, so the directory essentially, and grab web client underscore HTTP. I'm going to set this to once and turn this on. That is my web server. And since that's now up and running, I just open up a web browser to test this and I'm on my local host data ULC forward slash start.html. Go there, add my username and password. And if you are new to the Chasm tutorials, we usually always don't set passwords just for ease of use. So it's usually root and no password. Log in. Here's the responsive design. It adjusts to my screen resolution. Here's the office cam that I've added into this template. And if I click that, now here is my camera feed. Um, obviously this is pretty rudimentary just for tutorial purposes, but we have access to all of these tools uh, with pre-built objects that you, know, you could quickly um, use some of these tools for some of your customers out there. Okay. So with that, that's essentially it. So if you have any questions about how to configure a camera or anything about um, WinCCOA video, please feel free to leave a comment um, and we'll talk soon. Thanks for watching the Chasm channel. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please remember to subscribe and click the bell to stay notified when we post new updates.